2 degrees centigrade of global heating will likely lead to a billion human deaths. It takes a trillion tons of carbon to reach 2 degrees. A trillion divided by a billion is a thousand. And that is the thousand ton rule. For every thousand tons of carbon emissions, one future human will die. My God. So, turns out human extinction from climate change maybe isn't as unlikely as I made it out to be in my last video. While Toby Ord says in The Precipice that 20 degrees of global heating isn't enough to bring about human extinction, I just read a paper that I will talk more about later that says 10 degrees is enough to risk human extinction, and we could get there if we burnt all the known fossil fuels in the world. Also, Mark Lyna says in his book The Final Warning that just, just 6 degrees is enough to do us in. In other words, this is a contested issue, and Toby Ord may very well be wrong about the human extinction risk from climate breakdown. So was I wrong in stating why climate change won't lead to human extinction? Reverse the distancing footage! But then again, the good thing about claiming that something won't lead to human extinction is that if you turn out to be wrong, there won't be anyone around to say I told you so. Truth be told, confession time, the goal with my previous video was not to prove conclusively that climate change won't lead to human extinction. If that was my goal, I would have used more than one source. So the title was a little clickbaity, but what do you expect from YouTube? Contrary to how the conventions of parentheses usually work, the and why that doesn't matter part of the video title was the more important one. My goal was to argue that bringing up human extinction is a bad way to argue for climate action. And I still stand by that, even in the case that human extinction is plausible or even likely. I was more interested in the precipice than human extinction when making that video. It actually started out as a broader response to that book that became too much for a single video. Hopefully I'll get around to making a series. I say hopefully because my track record with promised video series is not great to be honest. I still haven't made part 2 of how Planet of the Humans could have been good. Is there still interest in that? For anyone wondering, this isn't the follow-up I teased at the end of my previous video. I'm planning a longer and more ambitious video on how to inspire climate action without bringing up human extinction. However, I came across something that relates to this subject and that I just couldn't wait to talk about, and that is the thousand ton rule, which I think can aid climate communication and outreach more than talking about human extinction. Because while human extinction might not really matter, human deaths do. And there's no denying that global heating is lethal indeed. Heat waves, floods, storms, droughts, hunger, thirst, diseases, pollution, acute embarrassment over increased pollen making your allergies act up, there are a thousand ways to die from climate breakdown. Right now, probably a million people die each year from causes related to global heating, and if that number stays constant, which it's probably not going to, we're looking at 100 million deaths over the next century. Even the 1 million dead per year estimates might be too low considering how many people die today already because of poverty. Every year, 18 million people die from diseases we can cure, 9 million die from hunger, over a million die because of unclean drinking water, 8 million children, that is 22,000 a day, die due to poverty. And since poverty and negative climate impacts interact and reinforce each other, these very grim numbers are likely to grow. So how many people are likely to die overall because of global heating? According to a paper that has made headlines recently, Quantifying Global Greenhouse Gas Emissions in Human Deaths to Guide Energy Policy by Pierce and Parncutt, at 2 degrees centigrade of global heating, a billion people, most of them in the global south, 
are likely to die over the course of one or two centuries. To reach 2 degrees, it takes a trillion tons of carbon emissions. That's a safe estimate, since the world is over 1 degree centigrade hotter now, and human industry has emitted over half a trillion tons of carbon. So just double those numbers. A trillion tons divided by a billion people is a thousand. And so you can say that for every thousand tons of carbon emissions, one future human will die. And that is the thousand ton rule. If I were a math teacher, I would tell you that this will be on the test. However, there are three kinds of people in the world. Those who can count and those who can't, and I definitely belong in category 5. My math credentials aside, I think the thousand ton rule is a potentially powerful way to talk about the impact of global heating and climate breakdown that conveys the proper scale of the crisis. I think it has several advantages. First, the statistic of 2 degrees equals a billion deaths is easy to remember. Incidentally, a good rule of thumb is that each additional degree of heating from now on is likely to lead to a billion deaths. One death per thousand tons of carbon is also easy to remember. If you're skeptical about the one billion deaths claim, consider that according to UNICEF, already today over one billion children are at extreme risk of impacts from global heating. If we reach two degrees, it's likely to happen this century, perhaps as early as mid-century. The one billion dead that this stat talks about includes many people, children, who are already alive. Aww. Second, you can get granular with the above stat. If 2 degrees equals 1 billion deaths, then 0.1 degrees equals 100 million, 0.01 degrees equals 10 million, and even 0.001 degrees equals a million deaths. This makes a strong moral argument for emission cuts that are usually dismissed as too small to make a difference because USA or China. Every tenth or even a hundredth of a degree of heating matters. Any global heating we can prevent is potentially life-saving and can reduce suffering. Third, you can get granular even to an individual level. I've talked about big numbers, deaths in the millions and billions, but remember, the thousand ton rule states that every thousand tons of carbon equals a future human death which, again, can convey that even small amounts of carbon emissions matter. And if you're so inclined, this lends itself to a morbid game where if you know the carbon emissions of something, you can calculate how many future people are likely to die from them. I think there's a potential card game in here somewhere. For instance, if a billionaire emits over a thousand tons of carbon by flying around in their private jet, and several billionaires do fly that much in just the span of a year, as you can see on climatejets.org, that's one future human death that those emissions are causing. For another example, Burning Man emits roughly 27,000 tons of carbon, so divide that by 1,000 and you get 27 future people dead. Or look at any given piece of fossil fuel infrastructure, like power plants or pipelines. If they emit millions of tons of carbon over the course of their operational life, then that comes out to thousands of future deaths. Which, at least to me, makes providing funds for new fossil fuel projects like Citibank and BlackRock and many more are still doing all the more obscene. To return to big numbers for a second, yearly global carbon emissions are at 13.5 billion tons. Divide that by 1,000. And you get 13.5 million future deaths that our fossil fuel dependent economy is causing each and every year. Fourth, talking in terms of human deaths is way less abstract than talking about a few degrees of heating or a couple hundred extra parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere, which don't immediately grab people, you know? Like, you need to spend time explaining what those metrics even mean. But everyone intuitively understands human deaths as something serious, and we already talk about catastrophes in terms of human lives lost. It's what the media usually highlights when reporting on wars, natural disasters, terrorist attacks, traffic accidents, pandemics, fatal vending machine incidents, etc. So why don't we talk about global heating in the same way? 
So yeah, now if someone asks me how bad climate breakdown and global heating is going to get, I won't say it could lead to human extinction. I'll instead say at two degrees of global heating, probably a billion people will die. That's one person dead for every thousand tons of carbon emitted. <laughs> With all that said, there are some things I think people should keep in mind about the thousand ton rule. First, these are order of magnitude estimates, meaning that the actual death toll could be a lot lower, 300 million, or a lot higher, 3 billion. The same goes for the one future death per thousand tons number. In the best case, it could be that it takes 10,000 tons of carbon to cause a future death. On the other hand, it could be that 1,000 tons equals 10 deaths. That's why I've said probably and likely so much in this video. Predicting the exact number of deaths from global heating is tricky and not really the point. The point is to prevent a future where the best case scenario means 300 million dead. Second, a thousand tons of carbon is not the same as a thousand tons of CO2. CO2 isn't just carbon or C, it's also oxygen. Oh, two of them, in fact. And so CO2 weighs more than carbon. Which is a bit annoying for the purpose of the thousand ton rule, because it's usually CO2 emissions people talk about. But since 1,000 tons of carbon equals 3,700 tons of CO2, all you have to do is divide the CO2 number by 3.7, or round it up a little and divide by 4 if you're not a math genius or don't have a calculator at hand, and you get the number for carbon. Third, one death per thousand tons of carbon isn't literally true. Like, as I said, it's an order of magnitude estimate. It's statistically true, in the same way that every cigarette you smoke cuts your life short by 10 minutes. Now, smoking just one cigarette ever probably won't cut your life shorter by 10 minutes. That stat assumes a long-term habit that you get sick from. In the same way, if the world completely stopped all carbon emissions today, and then just for the hell of it as a last huzzah for the fossil fuel age, another thousand tons of carbon were emitted, I doubt those final thousand tons would lead to a future death. The thousand ton rule assumes a trillion tons of total carbon emissions, and it assumes two degrees of global heating. Also, on a related note, fourth, the thousand ton rule is not going to be true forever, because neither the rate of global heating nor the impacts of it happen linearly, but non-linearly. That is, two degrees of global heating isn't twice as bad as one degree, and four degrees isn't twice as bad as two degrees. They're both more than twice as bad. At 1.5 degrees of warming, there's a 3% chance of the Arctic being ice-free during the summer in any given year, while at 3 degrees, the odds jump to 63%. At 1.5 degrees, a drought will last on average for 2 months, while the average length of a drought at 3 degrees is 10 months. At 1.5 degrees, the area burnt by wildfires in the Mediterranean will increase by 41%, while at 3 degrees it will increase by 97%. You get what I mean, right? Twice as hot does not mean twice as bad, nor twice as deadly. If the world's average temperature rises from 2.5 to 2.6 degrees, that will likely be deadlier than if it rises from 1.5 to 1.6 degrees even though the temperature increase is the same for both, 0.1 degrees. Fifth, I do want to point out that with current policies, we're not even headed for 2 degrees. We're headed for way more, 2.7 degrees. And that's if those policies are followed through on. So what's the thousand ton rule if we end up at 3 degrees? I don't know, I'm not a math magician. I'm, I'm category 5, remember? Sixth. I think the thousand ton rule should be used with caution. While I think connecting carbon emissions more directly with human deaths can be a good rhetorical strategy, we shouldn't indulge in calculating the death toll of global heating. If done too much, I think it could be off-putting and give the impression that environmentalists are obsessed with death. If anything, we should be perceived as being obsessed with life. Also, when you talk about deaths in the millions and billions, 
just the sheer size of those numbers risk making those deaths seem abstract. We shouldn't forget the humanity of the victims of global heating. We shouldn't forget who those victims primarily are, impoverished and dispossessed people in the global south, the ones least responsible for the suffering they're forced to endure. We shouldn't forget that this is the end game of colonialism. We shouldn't forget that this is fundamentally a question of justice. That's why so many march under the banner of climate justice. We shouldn't forget that climate breakdown is an enormous human rights violation. The rights to housing, to food, to work, to health and to a healthy environment, the right to life. All these are at risk for more and more people as the climate emergency rages on and makes greater parts of the world uninhabitable. We shouldn't forget the real human tragedies that this crisis entails. Death and suffering shouldn't simply be reduced to a number. It's always more than a number. So my advice is to use the thousand ton rule as a hook and from there talk about why people are dying and how even small emissions cuts can be life-saving and prevent suffering. Don't forget the larger systemic perspective to connect this to the legacy of colonialism and to capitalism. And again, to reiterate, the point with the thousand ton rule and with stating that a billion people will die at two degrees of global heating is not to predict the future. Scientists aren't wizards. The reason the authors wrote this paper is to prevent this future from happening because it's not inevitable. They advocate for a rapid shift to renewables, for banning fossil fuel extraction, for revoking the charters of fossil fuel companies and dispersing their assets, and for making the technology for energy conservation and renewable energy freely available to all. Pierce and Parncut advocate for radical stuff because we are in a radical situation. If you're very dead and know it, clack your jaws. A commenter on my previous video said that they would have appreciated that I talked more about solutions like joining an organization, communist slash socialist movement focused on the issue. And I agree, that was an oversight on my part. I guess the scope of my video was a bit narrow, focused mostly on rhetoric. The solution was, don't focus on human extinction in your climate outreach. I have taken care to bring up solutions in videos before. I have advocated for regenerative agriculture, rewilding, nature restoration, plant-based diets, degrowth policies, solidarity with all living things, as well as hinted at people to join Extinction Rebellion. And by now there are many more such organizations like Just Stop Oil, Climate Defiance, The Last Generation, and The Gelende. If you don't have the time to participate in such forms of activism, then if you can, you can donate to the cause through the A22 network, for instance, or the Climate Emergency Fund. On a related note, I encourage you to support the Stop Cop City movement through the Atlanta Solidarity Fund. It's a vitally important cause. Very brief summary here. Pause to read it. Check out these podcasts and videos to learn more. If you can't donate, and I get it, there's a cost of living crisis, then just educating yourself and others and raising awareness about all this, whether with friends and family or on social media, can go a long way. So here's the solution of this video. Wake people the fuck up. I know that can be uncomfortable because nobody wants to be a killjoy. I struggle with this myself, to be honest, but still, not enough people are truly aware of how dire the situation is. My hope is that the more aware people get, the more they can be mobilized and the more radical the things we can achieve are. The situation is more complex than that, sure, but I believe in strength in numbers. And hey, the silver lining of how increasingly relentless natural disasters are getting is that they are harder to ignore. It's getting harder and harder to not be aware. And maybe the thousand ton rule will motivate people more to action than talking about degrees of global heating or hundreds of ppm of CO2 in the atmosphere or the prospect of human extinction. That's just a thought though. What do you think? Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, all the stuff that satisfies the cravings of the YouTube algorithm. 
Also, thank you to everyone who watched my video on Steve Cuts. 80,000 views. That was very unexpected. A month ago, it had 3,600. So, thank you to Maximum Quality Content for inadvertently making my video blow up like it did, and congrats on their own video going viral. And of course, welcome to all the new subscribers. There are over 800 more of you now than a month ago, which is exciting. I hope you'll enjoy the content I've got planned for the future. These recent events have spurred me on to start a Patreon page, so if you'd like to support my work financially, you can do so there, and I'd be absolutely thrilled. I know I just encouraged you to donate to climate and environmental justice funds, and please prioritize those over my Patreon, but still, I really want to dedicate more time to making videos, and getting paid would help with that. There's a bunch of topics I'd love to cover, but require a lot of research to do justice, so whether you're a new or old subscriber, if you found my videos entertaining, enlightening, engaging, then please consider supporting me on Patreon if you can. And on that note, I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye!